Hello everyone and welcome to our session on teaching the tools of viral diagnostics. I'm Dr. Alex Danis with Mini PCR Bio and I'm really excited to walk you through some of the tools that we have to help bring real world relevance to biotechnology techniques to your classroom using the current COVID-19 pandemic. So first I wanna introduce you to who we are at Mini PCR Bio. We try and create and bring truly innovative activities to your classroom. So we do this in two ways. We create biotechnology equipment like our Mini PCR Thermocycler and our fluorescent glow box, which help to uh, make real biotechnology techniques accessible to your classroom while still being completely true lab tested equipment. And we also create innovative curriculum that can help you to implement these things in your classroom in and around the things that you might already be teaching. Today, we're going to be talking about how we can use COVID-19 in your classroom to bring real world relevance to topics that you may already be teaching or to help you introduce new ones into your classroom. So we're going to do a brief run through of two of our learning labs today. The first is our viral diagnostics lab, which is a great way to introduce nucleic acids, viruses and gel electrophoresis to your classroom. And the second is our qPCR lab. And this is one that you can use to try and talk with more advanced students about fluorescence, qPCR, and how clinical tests like the one for COVID-19 are actually performed. And then finally, at the end, I wanna introduce you to some standalone free resources that we have that you can use like little modules to try and supplement the curriculum you already have with COVID-19 related material. Both of the labs that we're gonna talk about today can be used to introduce your students to viruses. So of course the virus has two main parts. First, it has a nucleic acid genome, and this can be DNA like our own genomes, or it can be RNA like it is in SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. And this DNA or RNA genome is enclosed in some sort of shell. So this RNA genome is really what's gonna be key for the two labs and to your students' understanding of how we can use biotechnology tools like PCR and electrophoresis to diagnose disease. However, you can also use both of these labs to talk about other important structural components of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, like its outer envelope made up of glycoproteins. Also key to the labs that we're gonna be talking about today is polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So some of you may already teach PCR, but if not, PCR or polymerase chain reaction is an important tool to be able to find and replicate a specific target in a complex DNA sample. So PCR can also be a super useful diagnostic tool. In fact, among the most widely used COVID tests is the PCR test. And when we do a PCR test, we're trying to detect the presence or absence of a specific piece of genetic material. In the case of the COVID-19 diagnostic tests, we're looking for the presence of the coronavirus genome. Now, if you've received one of these tests, you know it begins when you donate a sample. So a nasopharyngeal swab from the back of your throat. This sample will contain a lot of genetic material some from you, some from random other bacteria and viruses that we don't care about for our purposes, and maybe if you're infected, the coronavirus. So in a PCR test, we're able to detect specifically the coronavirus's genetic materials and amplify them so there are lots of copies of them so that they're easier to find in our sample. And if the virus's genetic material is present, you can be pretty sure that the virus is present too. The first lab that we're gonna talk about today is our viral diagnostics lab. This is a lab that we just released this fall and it walks students through a scenario where they are a doctor trying to figure out if the patients in their waiting room have either the seasonal flu or a much more dangerous virus. So this virus in our lab is called NICV, so it is not specifically a COVID-19 uh, lab, but you can think about it in exactly the same way where there is this sort of mysterious new virus where there isn't a treatment or vaccine for it. And we're trying to figure out if our patients have a much more benign virus or this much more mysterious and scary virus. And we've done this because, you know, COVID-19 is the current pandemic that we're dealing with right now, but there may be other similar outbreaks in the future. So we don't want students to just be thinking about this as a now problem. This is something that scientists and uh, doctors and researchers have to tackle all the time. So this lab is perfect for intro bio students, but we've also added additional supplementary material that you can use to make it more suited for advanced learners, which we're gonna go through at the end of this section. So you can modify this lab to fit your needs, but the resources we have will walk your students through the science of viruses, how nucleic acid sequences are used to tell different organisms, species, and viral strains apart, and how gel electrophoresis can be used to visualize DNA for a number of different applications. So the students are gonna walk through four different patients uh, here. We have some that have fever and fatigue, some that also have muscle aches, some that have uh, a runny nose. And so the idea is that just by looking at these patients, it's gonna be really hard to tell the difference between who has uh, the seasonal flu and who has this Nick V virus. And so what the students are gonna do is they're gonna learn the importance of molecular diagnostics in being able to tell these kinds of things apart. 
in this lab to be able to accurately diagnose which disease each patient has, especially where these original diagnoses are unclear, we're gonna use a molecular test. Now in the clinic, this is often done using PCR or a polymerase chain reaction, which we talked about before, and has a number of different steps. Or the idea is that in this lab, the students are only gonna be performing that last step, the visualization step. So we have already simulated all of the first steps for you from collecting the sample to uh, doing PCR and amplifying it. Uh, and so your students will just be focused on gel electrophoresis and visualization. But the idea is that with these supplemental materials, you can also walk them through the concepts behind PCR. They're just only going to perform uh, the actual electrophoresis themselves. So we're gonna do all of these prior steps for them. And then they are just going to do visualization of the final sample. So if you teach agarose gel electrophoresis in your classroom, you might be familiar with the fact that agarose gel electrophoresis is an important tool that we use to separate and visualize DNA fragments. So again, if you teach this to your students, you might be familiar with explaining to them that the idea is that agarose is a long polysaccharide molecule that forms a thick gel like jello with many pores of different sizes in it. And when you add your DNA to one side of that gel, uh, and you add an electric current, your DNA is gonna sort out by size with small pieces of DNA zipping quickly through that gel and long pieces of DNA moving much more slowly. So you can separate your DNA by size and be able to identify different DNA fragments in all of your samples. So we're gonna make running and visualizing that gel really easy today. Uh, so we're using uh, in this lab our blue gel electrophore electrophoresis and visualization system. So you can run the gel and visualize it all in one compact tool and you can see it's quite small. Um, but our learning labs will work in any gel electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis and visualization system that you have. We've just tried to make it nice and small and compact and very easy to do. Uh, Additionally, with just your smartphone, you can watch and visualize your samples run in real time, which is really fun for the students. So the idea is that you can uh, complete this entire lab in just one single 45 minute class period. Uh, and that's one of the reasons is because our blue gel runs so nice and quickly. So if you were to go through the entire lab and run out all of the samples that we provide to you, again, you don't need to do any PCR. We have just provided you with these pre-amplified samples. What you would find is that each of your four uh, different patients has something different on the gel. So very quickly here on the left, we have our ladder, and then we have our four different patients uh, who each have a control piece of DNA in their samples, but we also have patients who have either this uh, more dangerous NICV virus or two people who have the seasonal flu. And so what you can talk with your students about is the fact that it was very hard to tell these patients apart just based on their symptoms in the waiting room, but it's a lot easier to do that with these molecular diagnostics, which will specifically pull out DNA or RNA uh, and amplify it from just the viruses that you're looking for. However, again, if you do want to go deeper with more advanced students, we also have an extension that tackles DNA and RNA sequencing. So because viruses slowly mutate as they move from person to person, you can use those mutations to see how a strain has spread. And so uh, we're going to use DNA sequencing in this extension to figure out where a specific patient, patient DZ, became infected as she traveled from Australia to Japan to the United States. And so what you can talk about with your students is that uh, you can really introduce them to the idea of viral evolution, the fact that small mutations start to pop up in these viral genomes as they pass from person to person, and how we can use that to trace viral sequences over time. So on the left here, we have uh, a lineup of all these different viral sequences they can go through. And on the right, uh, this is actually a real world example from the COVID-19 pandemic, where scientists have used these DNA sequences to actually build these phylogenetic trees of the viral strains and how they've evolved and moved through populations. So again, while this isn't specifically written as a COVID-19 uh, lab, you can really pull this back to real world examples of the fact that this is exactly how we're tracking uh, the spread of this virus through the world using DNA and RNA sequencing. So just to sum up, uh, we've tried to put together a viral diagnostics lab that is an engaging case study format. It makes your students the doctor trying to figure out what's happening in these patients. Uh, and we've added extensions that can add richness for more advanced students. And it goes through technical coverage of gel electrophoresis and conceptual coverage of PCR. So these are things that you can introduce to your classroom, uh, but you don't have to do PCR with this lab. It is only an electrophoresis lab, so you only have to run that once uh, piece with your students. 
Now, PCR with electrophoresis is a really important biotechnology tool, but it usually only gives us a yes or no answer if we're trying to figure out if there is a piece of DNA present in our sample. So this is great if you're just trying to figure out, is that DNA there or is it not there? And you can see here in our gel, we have a lane that has a bright band. Our piece of DNA that we were trying to amplify was present in the sample. And then on the right, we have uh, this lane that does not have that band, so our DNA was not present. So it just gives us a yes or no answer. And that can be really important. But sometimes we want more than just a yes or no answer of whether or not that piece of DNA was present. We want to know how much of it there was to start off with. And so this can be really important in some viruses, so things like HIV and herpes, where viral load is important. It's not just important if you do or do not have the virus, but it's very important to know how much of it you had. And so we need to look at the reaction, not just at the end, but during uh, the reaction as it happens to try and figure out which samples started with more or less DNA. So just to give you an idea of this, we have our little PCR tube here. And again, PCR works uh, exponentially. And so every cycle of PCR, one piece of DNA is gonna turn into two, and then the two will turn into four, and the four will turn into eight. So you start off with just one piece of DNA, then you have two pieces of DNA, then you have uh, another four added in, then another eight added in, and so you get this exponential amplification of DNA in your sample tube. So if we look at this in detail, if we actually look at these curves, what we're doing right here is we're looking at PCR cycles on the x-axis, and we're looking at number of DNA copies on the y-axis. And the idea is that uh, in PCR, because these products uh, amplify exponentially, at the beginning, they're gonna grow very slowly, but as you get more and more, you're gonna have this exponential growth. So over time, uh, here we have two samples, one in orange and one in blue. The orange one started off with more DNA in the tube, and so it's going to take off on that really big exponential curve much earlier than the blue tube, which had much less DNA to start off with. And so again, as we progress through these cycles, we're going to get uh, amplification of both tubes, and eventually they're both going to reach the same plateau phase when they run out of resources in the tube to keep building more and more strands of DNA. But you can see that during uh, the course of the reaction, they had a different curve. And so if we just look at the end of that PCR cycle, which is what we're doing with gel electrophoresis, we're only observing the products once they've reached that plateau phase. So it's hard to tell the two apart. But qPCR can look at the reaction as it's happening. So this is quantitative PCR, and it allows us to monitor the PCR product as the PCR reaction is happening. And the important thing here is that it's like showing up to a marathon about an hour after the marathon has been run. And you see all these runners milling about. So you can tell that a marathon was run and you can tell who ran the marathon, but you can't tell what order they showed up in. And so typical endpoint uh, PCR and electrophoresis is like showing up to that marathon after it happens, whereas qPCR is like showing up while the race is running so that you can see who comes in uh, at what stage. So this is where our qPCR learning lab really comes in today. This is great for advanced and AP biology students, and it really teaches students about qPCR, PCR, and fluorescence, and how all of these things can work together to see how much of a DNA product was in a tube to start off with. Your students may also be hearing about qPCR on the news because a qPCR test is one of the most common ways that we're currently testing for COVID-19. So while this lab is not written as a specifically COVID-19 or viral diagnostics based lab, the technology in this lab is how we're testing for COVID-19 in a lot of places. So it's a great way to, again, try and bring the news into your classroom and really use that to try and teach this biotechnology uh, application and curriculum. Now, the idea here at a really high level is that students are going to be the qPCR machine. So when we do the qPCR in the lab, typically it takes a very large, very expensive tens of thousands of dollars machine. But really all it's doing is it's amplifying DNA and it's using some sort of fluorescence readout to see how much DNA is in that tube. So that's exactly what we're going to have the students do. We're going to have them amplify uh, the DNA over and over three cycles at a time using our small mini PCR thermal cycler. So this is our thermal cycler here. It works just like any other thermal cycler you may have used beforehand, but it's nice, tiny, and compact. And it also comes with a uh, really easy to use uh, user interface. So this will plug into pretty much any device you have in your classroom from PCs to Macs to phones to tablets to Chromebooks. Uh, we have a mini PCR thermal cycler that will work with it, and the user interface allows students to program it themselves and watch the reaction uh, cycling as it happens, temperature-wise. And then, after they amplify it for a few cycles, they're going to use this, which is our 
P51 uh, fluorescent viewer, what the students are going to do is as they amplify their DNA, they're going to look for, for a fluorescent readout of amplification here. And this works because we've added a fluorescent dye into these samples that will glow when it finds double-stranded DNA. So as your students produce more and more DNA that in their tubes, as this PCR reaction progresses, they're going to get a greater and greater fluorescent signal. And so they're going to be able to see that. And so just as an example, it'll look a little something like this, where we have three tubes here. We have our negative control tube. Then we have a tube that started off with high concentration of our uh, DNA product and a tube to start off with low concentration. And I've just taken sort of a random time point in here around 20 cycles where you can see uh, this uh, bright tube would correlate to our orange line here where there's been a lot of amplification. And on the blue tube, uh, there's only been a little. But as we continue to progress through the reaction, you can see that now that second tube, it's starting to get brighter and brighter as that reaction progresses. And then at the end, they would both just be totally bright and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them. So by doing this, by amplifying and then by viewing the fluorescence over and over, your students can actually graph the reactions themselves. Uh, and this is just a simple graph that I put together in Google Sheets. So again, on the x-axis here, we have cycles. On the y-axis, we have the brightness and they'll create a reference uh, panel to give their uh, tubes a value between zero to three of how bright they think they are over time. And every three cycles, they can go in and they can input their brightness values and they can actually go in and see uh, that these curves start to form. And now these aren't the same beautiful curves that you would get from a computer outputting this qPCR graph, but they show you exactly the same thing, that the tube with the high concentration of DNA came up first and the tube with the low concentration of DNA came up second. Now, I'm telling you the answers to which tube had what uh, right now, but in the lab, there are unknown tubes. And so your students are gonna have to do this investigation and figure it out themselves. So it's a very visual visceral lab where they are acting as uh, the qPCR machine and creating these graphs themselves. So this was a very quick review of our qPCR lab, uh, which goes over viral diagnostics, biotech techniques like PCR and qPCR, fluorescence, and it allows the students to do their own observation and graphing of their qPCR products. Now, while this isn't specifically written as a COVID-19 lab, this qPCR method is how the COVID-19 testing that many students might be getting themselves is being done and they might be hearing about on the news. And so it's another great way to bring very real world relevance to this lab and to these biotechnology techniques right now, because this is how we are searching for COVID-19 in the population is using uh, this kind of tool. So it's another great way to bring it back to today for your students. An additional resource that goes along with this lab is our DNA dot on quantitative polymerase chain reaction or qPCR. So DNA dots are great quick explanations of modern genetic techniques. They're usually one or two pages and they're again really nice deep dives for those students who want to go a little bit further and go a little deeper into the technology. We also have a number of additional resources to supplement your curriculum uh, around COVID-19 that include some of these labs but are hopefully a bit more modular so that if you don't want to actually do these labs uh, each of these webinars that we've put together has about an hour long video walking through either COVID-19 genetics, COVID-19 vaccines, or the usage of qPCR with COVID-19 testing that comes with the video, PowerPoint slides if you want to work through them uh, with your students that way, and a student worksheet for each one of these. And so these are nice little modules that you can assign to your students so you can go through in class where we have already prepared everything for you. And I do want to say uh, right now that all of our curriculum is completely freely available on our website for you to download right now. So even for the learning labs that I've talked through today, the uh, teacher manual and the student manual are completely free and available for you to download so that you know exactly what you're getting before you actually purchase the labs um, and will allow you to just walk through them as well. All of our PowerPoint slides are totally free. You can go, you can take them, you can use them in your classrooms. Um, so hopefully that's uh, a helpful resource for you. We also hope you'll check out some more of our resources uh, on our website. We have a whole bunch of learning labs that cover everything from PCR to fluorescence to our BioBits labs, which now include our structure and function lab. So we have a lot more resources that you can check out on our website. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that this was a brief but helpful overview of some of the tools that we have uh, with our curriculum to try and bring real world relevance into your classroom using COVID-19 to try and teach some of these biotechnology techniques. I hope you'll check out some of our other resources. And as always, you can find out more information on minipcr.com.